Hey there, plushies! I'm your friendly neighborhood Let's Play Spider Man. Welcome you back to Freddy Farkas, the Frontier Pharmacist. That's where we left off. We're just exploring the town of Coarse Gold. So let's go over here, see what we get. Art designer Bob Gleason, that's what we got. It's the old abandoned assay office, once owned by a subsidiary of the old abandoned mine company. Before the mine shut down, this is where you got your nuggets appraised. Ah. Now you have to go to Madam's for that. <laughs> Good old Al Low Humor there. An assay office. Yeah, assaying is the uh, art of. Uh, isn't that the profession of, uh, you know, evaluating gold and other minerals if you want to sell them? They, the assay office is that evaluates how profitable it is and if it's pure and all that and how much money you would get out of it oh penelope she ignores you looks like penelope's headed inside the school for a while maybe you can catch her on the way out i think the school marm penelope there is his love interest this is the old red schoolhouse one of the few buildings that still seems solid and safe at least that's when I remember her being his, uh, girl. It's Sissy playing on the slide. The boys call him that because his mother dresses him so effeminately. Ah, that's not a girl. That's a boy. With luscious blonde hair and a red dress. Yeah, there's something wrong with your mother. Don't turn into Norman Bates. Please. Ah, there she is. The lovely teacher. It's Penelope Prim. Full-time school marm, full-time single frontier woman, and part-time heartthrob. How does she do it all? Easy. She's incredibly uptight and has numerous stress-related diseases. That makes sense. <laughs> Can we talk to her? Penelope. Freddy, how nice to see you. Did you leave work just to come see me? She's nice looking. Uh, 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 yeah. Just being able to look at you makes my day seem to fly by. Oh, love. Penelope titters and tilts her head coyly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do know how to flatter a girl, don't you? Now you get back to work so you'll have enough money to take me to the Sadie Hawkins Day dance next week. Mm, good point. As you wish, my lady. <laughs> oh. Yeah, nice woman. They, they go well together. Also, I can't get over Freddy's chin. I mean, usually people call those kind of things like a butt chin because you have a cleave there and they call it the butt, butt chin. He's got something else going on there. Not butt. Bollocks. It's a long plank firmly attached to some sort of axle, allowing one side to pivot upwards while the other side descends. A seesaw. When the kids play on it, one of them teeters at the top and the other totters at the bottom. The teeter totter. Say, you've got an idea for what you could call this thing. A kitty pult. Close enough, I guess. It's one of the young town's boys. Diligently trying to make his point. In this case, it's a six. Ah, so they're playing dice. It's either a spreading chestnut tree or a shedding spruce nut tree. Hmm. Hard to tell. It's either. It's either. It's either. Trying to look. Trying to look at the kid swinging either, on the swing. It's either. I guess I can. The old red. This is the, this is, this, this is, this is, can't. It's Weebix, one of the little orphan girls. Aww. Somebody taking care of you? Hopefully. Hello, Weebix. How are you this morning? At least it's not Weebix. She pointedly stares away from you, counting to herself and looking just a bit peeved. Oops. One, five, nine, thirty-three, four, seven and a half, two, six. <laughs> I've confused you now, haven't I? What a douche. Weebix's eyes get very large and well up with tears. Yeah. She sets her jaw firmly and keeps jumping. Starting with one. You are not proud of yourself. And yet you still went and did it. 
Yeah. Can we talk to Sissy? Hello, Sissy? My, your golden locks are looking pretty today. Sissy glares at you with a look that says, I know a thousand ways to cause pain to a human body. You want to start counting? I gotta say, when we are in the western uh, frontier, of course, but this game's uh, got some attitudes on them. I mean, some real attitudes, though, man. How, what are you teaching them? Survival school? What a nice area. Lead programmer, Steve Conrad. Yeah, we're still in the uh, opening credits. Yeah. Chances are you'll need that. Don't be tossing it into the swamp. I wasn't tossing anything in the swamp. I'll toss you in the swamp. Chances are I'm just looking at Main Street comes to an end here in the thick, mucky swamp. Beyond it lies the old abandoned mine. So that's the mine, huh? Over yonder's the old abandoned miner's commissary, where the miners used to eat before the mine closed down. Of course, the food over there is as fresh now as the day it was made. Yummy! That's the old abandoned mine, once run by the old abandoned mine company, Inc. You remember <laughs> blowing it up in the demo. It was Coarse Gold's original ore house. Man, these juvenile jokes, that's L.O. for sure. I mean, he made the Leisure Suit Larry series, so... <laughs> it's the last train to Coarse Gold, and it's sunken at the station. Please don't sing again. Ever. You remember a time not too long ago when these leaves were glossy and healthy. They look healthy to me. I mean, they're still green. The shrubs here by the swamp are particularly sad looking. Cheer him up with a joke? This big old water tower was previously used by the train station. Now it's junk. I mean, even if this is, has sunk into the swamp and everything, I'm sure there's a... like a trail still going the other way? You know? That's how train tracks work. Lead animator, Karen A. Young. Well, it's good that you are carrying a young. <laughs> I can make stupid jokes. I excel at them, just like Allo. But I don't go as low as Allo. <laughs> Composer Aubrey Hodges. Good music in this game. Hey, a tumbleweed. Artist animators, pay noble. No, no, I missed that name. It's hard to read that text. Tumble. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Got to keep on rolling. See them tumbleweeding, roll hard. Or In see them tumble rolling, tumbleweed. I wonder what they keep throwing out there. Can I pick it up? And get your hands all full of prickles? I'm sure I've been touching lots of prickles during our, um, our time. And, uh, English, it's a language. Let's go inside. Final. The pharmacy door is locked. This ain't Mayberry, partner. But if it's locked, it's my place. I should open it, right? Do I need to really take the key out of my inventory or something? Morning, Dominic. Morning, Freddy. What's new? Uh, let's see. I finished reading A Century of Dishonor last night. Quite impressive. That Helen Hunt Jackson really knows how to evoke an image of the white man's treachery. Go ahead. Do you know how many treaties your people have signed and then broken in the past 20 years alone? All of them? Uh, excuse me, I, I heard someone calling me or something. Yeah, it's uh, Freddy. Get out of this situation before you dig a grave. <laughs> All right, let's see what's in our inventory. Oh, look, hey, it's a key. This looks just like the key to the front door of my pharmacy. No narrator about Freddy? Huh? Cool. The door key's got a nice heft to it. All right, open the door. Score. You unlock the door. Score. 
Ta-da! 500 points! You're halfway through the game! What? It really is 500 out of 999! And I totally forgot that you actually... Whenever... It's a typical thing in Sierra games that you actually play for score or in an adventure game, which has always been weird to me but that uh, why do we have to play for score? But then again, it shows that if you don't get like the full score at the end, it shows that you have missed something. You haven't played the game 100%. And that is like an enticement that that was a good game. I'll play it again, but now I'm going for the 100% uh, completion. But, and usually they have like a ding or some kind of a twinkle when you get score. Like a, a part of the game's theme tune or just a ding or ding. Just to indicate that you have just gotten points. But in this game, it's actually somebody saying score. Which is funny. I find it more funny than just ding or ding. This is score. But I should know that I'm, I'm already halfway through the game. And we just started. This hand painted sign adds a real touch of friendly, folksy atmosphere to the place. It also spells pharmacy phonetically. In Breeden being as popular as it is around here. Uh. What does pharmacy have to do with. It, uh, never mind. This sign clearly lets the townsfolk know that the prescription counter is in the back of the store. Is that an organ play? Maybe there'll be a glass tube there, bent in the shape of the word prescription, filled with a rare gas that will glow in brilliant colors. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Boy, that'd make people actually want to buy drugs. Yeah, a great big neon sign saying prescriptions. Yeah, that'll make them want to buy drugs. Especially prescriptions! That you need from a doctor! You're an idiot! And as I was saying, that's an organ player. Working as a jukebox? This multi-instrument, piano roll-style juke machine is called a symphonium. A jukebox! The trouble is, the company that sold it to you went out of business after producing only one roll. And how many times can a person listen to, does your chewing tobacco lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? I mean, I don't, I don't see anything wrong just listening to one song over and 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 over. It's a tube of Preparation G, the Wells Fargo wagon driver's friend for over half a decade. So it's the, uh, it's the, uh, you know... The thing before Preparation A H. I wonder what Preparation A was. Probably just uh, some kind of salve that you... A standing for Anush. Well, let's take it. You never know. You pick up what? a tube of Preparation G in the handy 25-ounce crabby elephant size. Why am I itching in my eh, lid? Not my eye, but on the eyelid. So who's this? It's the president's wife. Ah. She's the head of the Just Say No to Ether campaign. Ah! This bottle is filled with this century's most incredible medical breakthrough. Chloroform? Ah, your diploma from the University of Hicksville School of Apothecary Sciences and other good guesses. <laughs> the old alma mater. What memories. Apothecary Sciences and other good guesses. This is your pharmacy, where you work. Hence the name, Farkas' Pharmacy. Good name. You thought an ice cream stand would attract customers. Mostly it attracts cockroaches. Especially now that the ice cream deliveries have stopped. True. I mean, why have a parlor when you can't even serve the thing that you serve? You thought an ice... Now I got a hair in my face. On the bottom shelf of the left-hand cabinet are Red Eye brand deep cleaning chlorine abrasive facial scrub, Whoopsie Daisy Fashion Air adult incontinence pads, 
Slick and Pretty Linseed Oil Shampoo, Luck of the Irish Underarm Oatmeal Packs, and I Can't Believe It's Not Opium Hallucinogenic Stick. Lovely things! There. Here on top of your reduced table, Madame Gazonga's Parfum Dough Springtime Fresh Scent. Aunt Lily's Toilet Essence Shampoo. French Woman's Brand Breath Detoxifier. Pinkham Edible Depilatory. Hollywood Land Ruminant Suppressant. Hollywood stars don't chew their cuds. Why should you? The new Epicheap Easy Shearer. And Preparation G. Though you don't always have that on hand. Except now I do. This is your farm. What else can we look at? This is your farm. It's St. Joseph, patron saint of chewable aspirin. Ah, very good. I mean, you can chew any kind of aspirin if you want to. Makes it more effective when you already... The pill, if you chew it up, dissolves faster. You thought an ice... But tastes horrible. This is your... Here on the second shelf, close at hand, is where you keep the most expensive medicines out of reach of the customers. Doc Halifax's Platinum Eczema Tonic, Montgomery's Digestive Granulated Plutonium, Dentist Do-It-Yourself Silver Amalgam Fillings, hand drill included, and California Cowboy Aluminum Snuff. The California Cowboy Aluminum Snuff is actually made in New York City. New York City? New York City! New York City! New York City! And also, did, 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 it, did it just say that one of the items on that shelf was plutonium? Where's Doc Brown? I mean, this is, 19, this is 1888. So that's one year after the events of uh, Back to the Future 3. He missed out on getting some plutonium from Freddy. Anyway, let's leave it here. And we'll see what happens uh, once I go behind the counter or the door back there to see... What's happen what's gonna happen? Yeah. So until then, you guys take care of yourselves and my green screen has gone weird again. Keeps happening all the time. <laughs> yeah. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Hopefully enjoyed. There. Gotta get it in the right order, you know. And I hope you all have a good evening, good afternoon, and a good morning. I will see you all next time. Bye. Take care, people. Bye. Bye.